Hi, it's Bill the Engineer from Suffolk here. Now this is a story, one of those products which looks absolutely great on paper, but which in my opinion is completely ruined by lousy design. Let me explain. Now anyone who's familiar with the old Defender transmission brake knows it's one of the, I'm afraid to say, several areas on the vehicle which is very badly designed. The brake drum is a huge, big, heavy uh, casting, acts as second flywheel. The actuating mechanism is crude in the extreme. It's actually got rather limited holding capacity. A number of occasions I've been on a steep ascent or descent and unable to hold the vehicle on the brake. And finally, if you get mud inside the drum, it doesn't clean off, it binds up the brake and it wears down the brake shoes. I was incidentally first alerted to this some 20 years ago on the wonderful lehana.com travel blog, which I recommend to anyone even today. Now in response to this, the aftermarket industry started to produce disc handbrakes. The first one I'm aware of was by a firm called Xeng, since bought out by Foundry 4x4, who sell these brakes to, uh, to this day. But there are other ones too. I know, for example, that Terra Firma have a disc handbrake. It's the X-brake which I'm going to review here. Now I bought one about two and a half years ago. Not cheap, but I thought that the benefits would justify it. And to run through the positives, well firstly it fits very easily, don't need to do any modifications or whatever, you'll get it on in an hour or so. Secondly, it's got very good holding capacity and it will hold the vehicle on the steepest slopes. And thirdly, any mud which gets onto the disc gets flung off so it works equally well when you're off-roading. All of that is good. I bought the disc handbrake about two and a half years ago. Initially it worked fine, but within about six months I started to have problems. And about a year after purchase, I recorded a short video clip um, documenting the problems. I did nothing with it, didn't publish it, but I'm going to include it now. Now the way this is supposed to work, the stationary brake pad slots inside the caliper and it's held just around the edge and you're supposed to use some sticky stuff or gunge, something like this. And of course it doesn't work. It soon works loose and then it rattles around between the caliper and the brake disc and it makes an infuriating noise. And if you're on a long trip with one of these things rattling around, it dries you up the wall. Now the disappointing thing is that the manufacturer knows all about this and he makes reference to it in the instruction leaflet. And he says, if it works loose, well, you should stick it back again, which of course is going to last about 10 minutes. I can assure you that the individual who designed this damn thing has never been on a long trip in a Land Rover with one of these things rattling around in close proximity to him. If he had, he'd soon change the design. Well, the first thing I had to do was to order some new brake pads. I have the original static pad here. It's got less than a millimetre of lining on it. Incidentally, it only started with about three millimetres, so very thin in the first place. But you do, of course, have to go back to the manufacturer to buy it. And bugger me, look at the price. You're paying nearly £50, including postage. And compare this with what you pay for standard front disc pads on a Defender. And by the way, they have about three times as much lining material. I assume that the accelerated wear had been because this had been chattering against the brake disc the whole time. I did, of course, have to modify it so I wouldn't get the same problem. So I ended up drilling a couple of holes, putting in keeper screws, and I reinstalled the brake into the vehicle, and it worked absolutely brilliantly for a time. Now, although the disc handbrake was working very well and the chattering problem had been solved, to my surprise, I found I was constantly having to adjust it to take up the slack, and within less than a year, I'd used all of the slack. So I had to remove the uh, disc cam brake and disassemble it, see what had gone on. Now the first thing I found was that the static brake shoe, the one which I'd modified, again this had worn down to less than a millimetre of material, 
and it wasn't that it was binding nor was it chattering and I can't explain the accelerated brake wear. All I can assume is that instead of using conventional friction material they've used baked putty or something like that. And by the way you have to go back to them and spend another £50 to get a replacement. But I also found that there was a problem with the movable brake shoe which had broken free. Now this is attached to the piston but not directly, it's attached to this miserable little piece of plastic here which slips over the piston and this had broken up. Well yet again I was faced with the prospect of buying some more pads but by now I was well fired up and the last thing I wanted to do was to spend my hard earned money with Foundry 4x4. I regard their commercial practices as being very sharp, I think the prices of their replacement pads are rip off, a bit like Gillette with their razor blades, that's where they make their profit. And I decided to get uh, the existing pads relined, even if it was going to cost me more. And so I sought out one of these specialist reliners, you know, the sorts of firms which make up uh, brake shoes and pads for classic cars. I found one such firm, a firm called Safetech UK. But to my very great surprise, I found that not only were they prepared to reline existing pads, but they sold new pads in this pattern. And I have one such pad here. I'm pleased to say that the price was quite reasonable too. For a specialist item like this, £10.50 plus sales tax for a pair of pads. And that's just over a quarter of what Foundry 4x4 charge for theirs. So I bought a pair and I obviously had to modify the mounting of the moving pad this time to prevent it from breaking free like before. And I did what the original designer should have done. I drilled and tapped a hole in the steel piston and I put in a set screw. A couple of minor points. You've obviously got to make sure that the head of the set screw uh, doesn't protrude into the lining material. And you also need to shim behind it to compensate for the removal of this little plastic gizmo, but no sweat. But interestingly, with the two previous sets of pads which I had, I found that for some reason the static pads both wore much more quickly than the moving pad, and there's still plenty of usable material here. So I reinstalled one of the uh, previous moving pads and I've still got this uh, new one for next time. So in summary, we have what I think is potentially a great product, but in my opinion it's been ruined by sloppy design. And it's not as if the manufacturer doesn't know about the pad retention problems. They are even referred to in the manual. As a chartered engineer myself, I despair uh, when I see what I consider to be sloppy work by other people in my profession. Final footnote, I've already mentioned that you get asymmetrical uh, wear on the two pads and it's these static pads which wear out much more quickly than the moving pad and after a period of time you're going to build up a supply of these and unused pads. But hold on, I'm pleased to say that Saftec will sell the pads individually and they'll sell you a couple of these uh, static pads, again for £10.50 plus sales tax, and that's a massive saving compared to the price of going to Foundry 4x4 and buying new pairs of pads. At the end of the day, I've got a very good working handbrake and it's not even going to cost me a fortune in maintenance costs.